But maybe in the classroom we need to think of techniques or tricks to get students to reread text, to revisit texts. So obviously different tasks for the text. First task, just read the text, get the general idea. Now we're going to revisit the task and we're going to look for all the words beginning with R. We're going to look for all the words related to this topic. Or we're going to look for all the grammar words. So the twos and the fours and the that's and the so's. So we'll be revisiting the text from a linguistic point of view. But if you can think of excuses to go back to a text, I think that's probably quite a good thing. It has to be a different task. Another way of going back to the text, or not quite, is this notion of uh, narrow reading. Yes. Narrow reading is, in course books, as much as I love them, but course books tend to go from topic to topic to topic to topic. You get 15 units in a book, and every unit is about a different topic. So the chances of vocabulary being recycled are low, because each topic has a different set of vocabulary. You read a text about bees, you're not unlikely to read another text about bees in that same book. The next topic will be about shopping. The next topic will be about traveling. The next topic will be about crime. You see what I mean? The notion of narrow reading is to take a topic and to read lots of things about it different texts about the same topic. So the topic is kept narrow, you see what I mean? So the chances are that the vocabulary will recycle more often than it does in a traditional course book. So narrow reading might be to say, okay, we've read the B text, we well, want to recycle language about bees, I don't know why, maybe my students are all, uh, what is a person who studies bees or apiculturist or something, <laughs> honey person. So here's a poem I found about bees, and look at all the language in it which relates to bees, which may well come up in the text and the bumble. See what I mean? This is just a different genre of text, a different kind of text, but it's recycling the same vocabulary. But you can do this, of course, now with the internet, this is absolutely brilliant because you can tell students to go out and find their own text about the topic of their choice. Or you can follow news stories. Take a news story, um, uh, any news story. Uh, it's going to have, it's usually going to run for three or four days. Think of the floods, for example, last week, was it? Two weeks ago, here in Oxford. A lot of language there that's going to be repeated. Words like flooding, inundation, emergency, urgency, uh, blah, 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 emergency services, this, that, and the other thing. Lots of vocabulary like the passives, it's been flooded, it's going to be flooded, it won't be flooded, etc. Now if the students follow, each student can take one topic and follow that through using text on the internet and then collecting, as it were, the vocabulary, not even consciously, by rereading these texts, or rereading the, reading the same topic, different texts, a lot of this vocabulary is going to become encountered by... Think of the time, think of how many of you before December 2004 had ever heard of the word tsunami? I mean, apart from our Japanese, because it's a Japanese word, isn't it? Exactly. I'd never heard of it before. Tsunami, tsunami. What's a tsunami? I thought it was something you eat. I thought it was that <laughs> delicious Italian thing you have at the end with chocolate and stuff. <laughs> oh, that's what it is. And I can read about the tsunami. I shouldn't laugh, but I mean, but we, that word became part of our collect because of enc repeated encounters. Repeated encounters. It became such a word. It's probably shot up in the terms of the frequency list to one of the main, you know, because now it's used metaphorically for also, we want to give our students that tsunami of vocabulary. That's what we want to do. Uh, so giving, recycling, recycling, recycling. That's the other, another important R word. Another way of recycling is to give the students the same, mm, okay, of repeating. It's not repeat the same topic, but repeat the same kind of text. So if you look on the back of your handout, you'll see I've collected four texts from the same section of this newspaper which reports on research that's been done around the world. So it's news about research. So if you, have a, if you can look at those four texts, what, and, and these are dense, this is difficult, I'm not saying this is going to be, these particular texts, this, this is not going to be easy for any low level student, but you can choose easier texts, but what we've got is four text of the same genre, or if you like, the same register, and we'll come to that in a second. Just have a look, I mean, we don't have a lot of time, but just uh, give me a break. Look at those four texts. What is the overall organization of each text? Does it have, how many parts does it have? 
Yeah, so we're looking at the kind of overall shape of the text. So you'll need to read these pretty rapidly, but to get a feel for what is the overall organization of the text. And then, are there any grammatical features that are common across the texts? For example, the tense, the pronouns, the modal verbs. And is there anything that's actually repeated? Any formulaic expressions, any words or phrases that are repeated across the dis different texts? So take a couple of minutes to read those four texts at your leisure. Don't read aloud. Um, and just bearing those questions in mind. And we, we'll, I'm not going to give you a lot of time for this, just to give you a feel for this kind of activity. Yeah? So two minutes, silent reading, and then I'll give you a chance to talk to your neighbor. Okay, you, you may not have read all four texts. It's not easy, is it? I mean, they're difficult texts. Also, it's not easy reading in a classroom. I found this, I mean, I was talking about this the other day in one of the workshops, how I find it difficult reading in public. I feel very self-conscious. Mm -hmm. Reading is something I prefer to do in the privacy of, you know, <laughs> at home or on the bus. But, um, and I think this is one of the problems that students find in the classroom is that they're kind of reading, they're just seeing words on paper, uh, but they can't sort of concentrate because it's... Uh, so I like to... This is the sort of thing that you could get them to do, first of all, at home, is read the text at home, then come prepared to class with answers to these questions. But I'm rushing you because we don't have a lot of time, just to give you the idea. But can you now, just in pairs or groups of three, or whatever's comfortable, talk about these texts... Just share ideas about any of these three or all of these three questions. Uh, just have a chat. It's not a test because uh, I've got answers that I'm going to share with you. How many parts? Three? What are they? A kind of general statement. Which is also Isabel and... Appeal to the reader, yes. Uh, the use of you is very interesting here, and I think this suggests that we're not actually in very highly technical writing. These are sort of have been dumbed down, if you like, or made more accessible, these research studies, for a more general audience. And so the use of you would be not typical of a research paper at all. It's like you were talking about, surely the use of I has been prescribed in certain academic writing. Um, so that's very, you've noted that already, uh, and this kind of appealing question, for example, in the first one. So what we're talking about here, yeah, before we just get on to answering these questions, I suppose I ought to introduce my fourth R, which is the notion of register. Register is, has, is defined in all sorts of ways. Sometimes it's used synonymously simply with style, although... Um, some schools of thought say register is a very specific thing, and it's a combination of the topic, the audience, and the mode.